All right. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome to the eighth Zoom lecture of this semester and back to the 56th public lecture series celebrating 30 years of research at the Archaeological Research Unit of the University of Cyprus. I am pleased to welcome and introduce our tonight's speaker, a relatively new member of the ARU team of researchers, Dr. Marc-Antoine Bella. Marc-Antoine left France last year to take up the position of postdoctoral fellow at the ARU in the framework of the Sylvia Ioan Foundation funded chair for digital humanities held by Professor Apostolo Saris. Marc-Antoine Bella was awarded his MA in Applied Geophysics from Paris Sorbonne University in 2005 and an MA in Environmental Archaeology from Paris Sorbonne. In 2010, he was awarded his doctoral title in Earth Sciences from the University of Corsica and Paris Sorbonne University. Following his doctoral research, Dr. Vela held a postdoctoral fellowship at the Chenere, the European Center for Research and Teaching on Environmental Geosciences, and was a researcher and resident representative of the French Institute of Andean Studies at La Paz in Bolivia. Since 2015, he's director of the mission Archaeology and Paleoenvironments Paleo of the Tiwanak River in Bolivia, under the auspices of the French Ministry of European and Foreign Affairs. He is also research associate of the team Archaeologie Environmentale of the CNRS, Archaeologie et Sciences de l'Antiquité, from the Pantheon uh, uh, Sorbonne Paris and University. His main research and his main interest and research specialization concern the interaction between ancient civilization and the environment, the application of archaeogeophysical survey, paleoenvironmental and paleogeographical reconstructions with a with a specialty in geomorphology and geoarchaeology. The chronocultural context of his studies concerns the Mediterranean and South American archaeology. He has published 14 articles in journals and international conference proceedings volumes as first author, and has participated in more than 10 international congresses. Since October 2020, he has been a postdoctoral fellow in the Silvia Iwano Foundation Chair for Digital Humanities. Before giving a virtual floor to Marc Antoine, I would like to remind you once more to now switch off your cameras and mute your microphones. Should you wish to address a question or comment to our speaker, feel free to use the chat button on Zoom. You may also switch on your cameras at the end of the presentation. Talk to the speaker by raising your hand and muting your microphone. So Marc Antoine, good evening and welcome. Thank you very much. I will uh, share my screen now. You should have it. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Okay. Perfect. So good, good evening, everyone. Before beginning my public lecture um, entitled Archaeo Ge Geophysical Surveys, a review from Cyprus. I would like to first to thank Professor Jonis for organizing this event and for his presentation of my pre previous work. I would like also to thank Professor Saris, Prof Director of the GeoInfo Lab of the University of Cyprus, for giving me the opportunity to work in Cyprus. Underlying the principle of archaeogeophysical archeo prospecting are the measurements of the variation of the geophysical properties of the top and subsoil caused by the presence of anthropogenic materials or residues of past activities. It will suffice to recall that the five main families of instruments, that mean electrical, magnetic, electromagnetic, thermal, and seismic, require the detection of a phys physical contrast between the materials and the surrounding medium. The electrical resistivity of the ground depends on the local hydro hydrological conditions, the chemical composition, and the porosity of the soil. Electrical methods can be used in four different ways, with soundings, area res resistance survey, and electrical resistivity tomography. Finally, the electrostatic device is adapted to a urban context and allows the, measure, the measurements of apparent resistivity without galvanic contact. Apparent conductivity can be measured using electromagnetic inductive techniques. 
electromagnetic instruments measure quantities of the returning electromagnetic signal. That means the two, uh, the two quantities are the electrical conductivity and the magnetic susceptibility of the soil. Magnetometers measure the um, pardon. Magnetometers measure both induced and mag ma remanent magnetization. Induced magnetization by the Earth's magnetic field depends on the magnetic susceptibility of the material. Fired items, such as concentration of pottery, fired bricks, hearts, and burned foundations possess remanent magnetization that can be detected within a depth of 1.5 meters below the surface. Finally, the ground pen penetrating radar, or GPR, makes use of an electromagnetic pulse of radio frequency transmitting into the ground and being reflected at layers or targets of differ different electrical properties. Knowing the electrical conductivity and the magnetic permeability of the subsoil, it allows us to have an estimation of the velocity of the propagation of the electromagnetic waves and to have an information about the depth of the remains. Well, the, it's most of all the differences between natural terrain and heterogeneity that are identified as geophysical anomalies. In order to obtain a reliable interpretation of the underlying features, both the shape and the nature of these anomalies needs to be taken into consideration, and it is necessary to confirm interpretation by excavation. As a non-destructive methodology, geophysical survey offer a relatively rapid way of investigating the subsurface to identify features. Among the first, very first application of archaeological surveying, we can cite the very early use of magnetometry at ENCOMI, the magnetic, um, the magnetic and resistivity survey at Jormalaxia Visakia, à la Sultan Teke, and the resistive survey at Kirokitia and at Amatus. Advances in geophysical instrumentation now allow the, detect the detection of small structures so, such as post holes and can provide evidences for the presence or absence of archaeological structure, their depth and geometry with a much better resolution than in the past. Archaeological research has employed geophysical prospection methods for more, more than 50 years. The adoption of the techniques in each, each geographical region followed a more or less acceler accelerated pace. Cyprus was one of the first localities in the Mediterranean world to make use of non-invasive research. In Cyprus, since the beginning of the 70s, well, even earlier in the 50s, uh, several techniques have been implemented in order to determine the extent of areas with dense archaeological remains to characterize the archi um, architectural organization of buildings, but also, but also to provide addi additional information on past human activities. Three sites from the pre-ceramic and ceramic Neolithic, 11 sites from the Bronze Age, eight sites from the Iron Age to the Antiquity period, it means Hellenistic and Roman, and four sites dating to from the Middle Ages, Byzantine and Venetian period, have been the subject of systematic and more or less extensive geophysical survey. Finally, nine sites were mapped using non-invasive methods as present preventive measures for potential future urban development. And Komi was settled at 10 meters above sea level on a chalky plateau dominating the delta formed by the Pleistocene alluvial deposits of the Pelayos River. The settlement must have, must have been established near an inlet of the sea, which have been silted up with alluvial deposits since, since then. 
since 1940-1938-34, uh, uh, excavation by Franco-Cypriot mission brought to light architect architectural relics of an important city dating from the late Bronze Age. The geophysical, geophysical survey undertaken in September 1958 at Encomi was the first to be carried out in Cyprus and is the only archaeological archaeogeophysical archeo survey in the occupied area. Its goal was to depict the internal organization of the site through the detection of arch arch architectural remains, but also to map the road structuring the, the site. The results of the magnetic prospection, confirmed by archaeological excavation, made it possible to highlight archaeological structures so, such as the citterns and hearts, However, the dominant feature of the magnetic disturbance was undoubtedly the system of linear anomalies corresponding to the road systems. System. The archaeological site of Amatus lies between the coastline and almost 55 meters above sea level at the transition between the Pacna and Nicosia ge geological formation. Capital of one of the Cypriot Iron Age kingdoms and later seat of a bishopric, the site contains important monumental buildings. The geophysical surveys carried out on Amatus concern two distinct sectors with specific objectives. On the Acropolis, the aim was to analyze urban organization, while in the lower town, it was to distinguish built up areas from non built areas. In the Acropolis sector, electro electrical survey allowed to the, end the identification of ancient terraces. Likewise, likewise, several high resistance anomalies have been associated to the presence of archaeological remains as they were located between excavation trenches. In the lower town near the harbour, a very clear border extending over 100 metres running in an east-west direction, parallel to the current coastline, might be related to the spoil from previous excavations. Kirokitia is one of the most iconic sites of the um, Cypriot Neolithic era. The site located at 200 meters above sea level is located on a limestone rocky outcrop overlooking from north to west the deep meander of the Maroni River. And the extension of the site is between six and eight hectares. The electrical resistivity survey carried out in the Sultanate of Kirokitia targeted the limits of the occupied space and its possible internal organization. The corresponding results showed that the extreme low value, value of the apparent resistivity are located along a north-south ditch whose alignment with the neighboring rocky relief, relief uh, suggests a natural origin. Likewise, likewise, strong resistivity values have been linked to the presence of the outcrop of a limestone bank. In the southwestern part of the prospected area, the geometric organization of the structures is difficult to identify. However, some anomalies manifest a semicircular signature of high resistivity values, which seems complementary to the roundhouse identified by the older excavations. Early Early exploration were primarily aimed at rec recognizing the extent of occupation of the site rather than their detail map mapping. Finally, the results are more related to the geological or to the environmental characteristics of the subsoil. Most recent archaeological geo geophysical surveys could provide much better resolution. For example, the site of Dromolaxia visakia was systematically investigated since the 70s through the geophysical surveys. The geological context of this area is characterized by the, most, the almost continuous presence 
of marine limestones and numerous, qua numerous uh, quaternary alluvial finds on the we western edge of this paleo depression demonstrates the role of detrital e erosion in the formation of the basin. The upper geological layer is composed of Holocene alluvium and lagunary deposits with high clay content and salt content also. Dromolaxia is a large Bronze Age city being occupied from um, the uh, 16th century. And at the end of the Bronze Age, the, the site was intensely, intensively populated, and it is considered as one of the most important harbors in the entire Eastern Mediterranean. The geophysical survey that were carried out in the region aimed to establish the total extent of the city and to trace buried archaeological structure re related to the late Bronze Age occupation. The first campaign was realized in the 70s using magnetometry, resistivity, and electromagnetic surveys, and led to the discovery of one of the richest tomb, tomb in Cyprus. In order to establish the total extent of the city, six more extensive surveys were carried out between 2010 and 2018. The GPR images indicated fairly detailed anomalies related to the rectangular structures and to monumental building compound. It was possible to discern details such as opening in the walls and circular stone structures within the compounds, all of which were verified during excavations. Architectural remains started to appear in the GPR depth slice images at a depth of approximately of almost 30 centimeters below the surface, extending down to at least one meter depth. The magnetic survey realized suggested that the concentration of a number of circular anomalies might be related to a large prehistoric cemetery, having an extent of at least 4,500 um, meters square. A strong magnetic anomalies, anomaly has been linked to a possible oven or clean kiln and associated with slag piles. The archaeological site of Kofinu is located at almost 140 meters above sea level in the Xeros Valley. The local geology is composed of stratified shale and clay from the Lefkara formation. First archaeological in investigation were realized within the framework of the Unsala and Sisalak projects directed by Professor Vionis. The archaeological site is characterized by a Byzantine church and possible presence of associated structures. In 2020, magnetic and GPR survey were undertaken in order to look at possible architectural remains re related to the functioning of the, the religious complex. Several reflectors outline a structure with dimension of around 16 per um, four meter, with at least one or two internal division. The fact that this particular feature does not show any intense, intense magnetic signature suggests that it is most probably a stone construction without any signs of burning. The archi architectural foundation of a prob probable church are located located to the north. A dense archi archi architectural complex also appears to the GPR measurements toward the northeast side of the surveyed area. The combination of the GPR and magnetic signals may be indicative of a farm steel. Finally, further to the south, four intense separated GPR anomalies are shown whose rectangular, rectangular shape suggest an anthropogenic origin. A similar but wider rectangular anomaly, almost three per three meters, is indicated in to the southwest of the modern cemetery, which is loc located to the southwest of the survey area. The archaeological site of Neapaphos is located between the actual actual coastline and until 40 meters above sea level. The local geology is composed of Pleistocene alluvial terraces and of chalk and clay from the Lefkara formation for the higher altitude sectors. 
since the first intervention, archaeological intervention in 1951-52, Neapaphos has revealed important structures related to the classical antiquity. Two distinct GPR surveys were recently performed at the necropolis of the tombs of kings, respectively aiming at localizing possible buried structure, but also to detect inner cracks and fractures filled with mortar and metallic reinforcement bar inserted during previous restoration actions. Additional geophysical campaigns have been conducted in the area of Neapaphos. Preliminary results of the magnetic survey concerning the sector of the Agora indicate, indicated several rectangular anomalies that have been related to a mag, um, a diamagnetic slabs or limes of limestones, probably used for the pavement of the, of the pathway. A granite column was included in the survey and appears in the form of concentrated depots. Some positive anomalies have been interpreted as clay pipes using for, used for water management. The um, electrode tomography resistivity method implemented at the port of Catopaphos that you have in the bottom left uh, of the image, aimed at to investigate underwater archaeological relics date, dating from Hellenistic to Roman period. This survey was able to provide solid evidence on possible buildings walls that are buried no more than two meters under the seabed. A ge geophysical exploration was also realized in the sector of Paphos, Neapolis, in order to map possible buried archaeological structure using diverse geophysical methods, means multi-sensor magnetometry and GPR, before possible construction in the urban area. All through, although the um, geophysical results suggest that most of the area is without significant ancient occupation, there are some ex exceptions consisting of a number of linear anomaly and round features that are about 4.2 to 4 meters apart. The particular features are obvious in both the magnetic and the GPR data, although the magnetic measurements are observed from high levels of noise. Oh, obscured, sorry, from high levels, no, high levels of noise. Most of the archaeogeophysical archaeo prospection surveys or surveys in Cyprus involve four main objectives. The first is urban and proto-urban and village organization. The second is to study the use of space between buildings. The third one is to study the geomorphology. And finally, the fourth one is to study the archaeological heritage management and protection. The majority of these studies are aiming to restitute your ancient urban or proto-urban -organi proto organization and its different components. The location and characterization of building re remains concerned all periods investigated and represent the main target of the geophysical surveys in Cyprus. Studies that aim to specify the use of interior spaces are la largely underdeveloped and have only conserved prehistoric and Iron Age sites. Only four sites were the focus of electromagnetic survey, for example, at Calavasos Aios Dimitrios, Kandu Kuvunos, and Ateneu Malura, and Dromolaxia Visakia. This research is carried out in situ for the electromagnetic method or from, from, from soil samples for the magnetic susceptibility, susceptibility and chemical analysis. Their results highlight distinct characteristics, for example, a higher conductivity, electrical conductivity, an increased magnetic susceptibility, an increased concentration of specific chemical elements between the interior and exterior of the structure, which can be related to byproducts of domestic or industrial activities. Uh, Archaeogeophysical survey often consider the geomorphological context as a limitation for the application of specific techniques or the cause of the poor quality of the measurements. In such, in such case, however, the identification of geological outcrops does not represent a failure of the, method, um, the methodology used. In contrast, geophysical surveys 
permitted the location, the location of sectors with greater sediment thickness and therefore consequently and therefore a, consequently a better temporal resolution of the archaeological stratigraphy. Such information was obtained at Climonas uh, Iosticonas and Pila Coquinocremos, while the most striking results were obtained at Kition. Finally, concerning the study of the preservation of archaeological remains, only one site at Neapathos, Tomb of, tombs of, of Kings, was investigated using GPR survey in order to detect possible fractures and previous restoration that have been that have used metal metallic reinforcement. In comparison to the backdrop resistivity, the general signatures of archaeological remains show higher resistivity values in the case of art architectural remains and lower value when consisting of ditches, pits, or domestic activities. The general magnetic signature of the archaeological remains are characterized by low amplitude signal signals, while burned structures, concentration of sheds or kilns, are related to a higher magnetic signals. Finally, the GPR measurements are expressed in terms of the presence of flare reflectors, which correspond to discontinuities of the electrical properties of the subsurface. Most of the time, results are represented in the form of depth, depth slice, which show the horizontal distribution of the reflectors as a function of depth. Still concerning the actual discussion of the geophysical um, uh, method in Cyprus, sur surveying in Cyprus could be regarded as very challenging due to the geomorphology and climate, climate among other limitations. In many cases, rumble, stones, shallow bedrock, and uneven surfaces prevent the deployment of multi-channel motorized, motorized systems. As the Trodos mountain range has been exploited for copper production since Chalcolithic period, a large amount of slags can be located across the entire island, making the magnetometry method unsuitable. The shallow soil, shallow soil deposits and their dry resistive attributes limit the use of electrical methods that require the insertion of electrodes in moist or near moist soil. Electrical and Electromagnetic prospecting meet in Cyprus the limits of their interpretation. The simultaneous presence of a very resistant rock, uh, natural rock, for example, limestones, and very conductive other rocks like marl, uh, clay, and salty formations, sediments, covering a scale of a resistivity value identical to those of the contrast between the stone walls and the surrounding sediments leads to major, major uncertain, uncertainty in identi identifying anomalies of ar archaeological origin. The use of local materials as building blocks for the ancient architecture, combined with the bad preservation of the structural remains, the structural remains induces further problems in distinguishing the archaeological feature from their surrounding matrix or geological background. In general, most of the geophysical surveys indicated increased level of noise or originating from present day intensive cultivation practices. The measurements were also influenced by the, by the rumble of previous archaeological excavation, road excavation works, and the existence of scattered objects from modern pollution. Finally, one of the major limitations in Cyprus is the lack of systematic use of geophysical survey during program or explorative archaeological projects. The other limitation is the need for cross-combined analysis with excavation to enhance the interpretation of geophysical anomalies. It has to be noted that the lack of consist consistency in many reports and publications, as well as the serious absence of metadata information, especially relating to the sampling or to the strength of the signal, 
create many difficulties in defining the geophysical signatures of the archaeological remains found in Cyprus. In most reports, signal strength, strength is presented in qualitative rather than quantitative terms, sometimes referring to colors or gray level contrast. While the results of the survey are always represented by a map, the scale of variation of values are often presented, um, not often presented, and the absence of precise coordinates does not allow the, the accurate location of the studied area. This is also due to the precautionary measures taken to determine looters using the particular results for excavation. However, this observation limit the reproducibility of measurements and do not permit a more um, serious investigation for scientific purposes. One solution could be to propose a standardized guideline for each archaeogeophysical archeo method for the specific context, context of Cyprus. To conclude on uh, the um, geophysical survey in Cyprus, a wide spectrum of techniques has been used to study archaeological sites in Cyprus. The most commonly used method, however, remains GPR. Magnetic and electrical surveys are also well represented, while the elect electromagnetic method was only applied at a lim limited number of sites. Finally, the tomo electrical tomography resistivity is still very little developed in Cyprus. Still, the current trend is to involve more than one method of prospection in most of the investigation. This manifold geophysical approach has a number of advantages. It, it has been proven in several studies worldwide and specifically in the Mediterranean area. First of all, it allows an, to investigate a greater diversity of targets than would be possible with a single method. Measuring the different properties of the target through the different methods, it's possible to, characterize, to better characterize the geophysical anomalies in terms of their physical signature by specifying the amplitude of the signal according to several parameters. It means that, for example, we can have information on the resistivity, on the magnetic, and then we have a better characterization of the anomalies and we can e more easily relate them to archaeological features. Finally, the manifold approach enhances the interpretation of geophysical anomalies in terms of archaeological structures and make it more and make the interpretation more robust, increasing the level of confidence of the interpretation. The actual development in the Digital Humanities and Geoinformatics Laboratory concerns the master program, Digital Heritage and Landscape Archaeology of the University of Cyprus. It is a unique postgraduate program in the area of the Eastern Mediterranean that offers a concrete interdisciplinary academic course platform dealing with the application of spatial technologies and geoinformatics in the wider domains of digital humanities. The program will act as an interface between new technologies and the humanities, exposing students to the latest special technological developments, providing hands on training to different instrument, instrument, instrumentation and software, promoting a critical perspective on their application in terms of addressing archaeological and historical historical oriented question and opening a dialogue between different disciplines. The other development concerned the cross combined approach between non-invasive techniques such as satellite, satellite remote sensing and aerial photography. Another research topic that I'm actually developing concerns the geomorphological and paleoenvironmental studies in Cyprus. Um, based on a review paper, we address the different analysis of stratigraphic profile and cores from fluvial and coastal areas, as well as geomorphological mapping for the reconstruction of the past landscapes. 
our preliminary results highlight that the interdisciplinary links between archaeology, geomorphology, and paleoenvironmental studies are important to explain environmental impacts on human societies. The originality of this work is to review the geomorphological and paleoenvironmental studies in Stupus for a better understanding of the relation between societies and environment. This paper is based on the study of 49 sedimentar sedimentary cores and profile from alluvial and colluvial areas, and from 66 uh, cores extracted in the coastal plains. In addition, five geomorphological maps were gathered to complete this review. Although, <clears throat> Although well developed at the scale of the Mediterranean, multimeter analysis of subsurface samples extracted from coring is still limited in Cyprus. The most studied area represented, represented at the south eastern sector of the island is represented at the south eastern sector of the island in the vicinity, vicinity of Larnaca Salt Lake. The Larnaca Salt Lake delivered two continuous undisturbed sediment core with sedimentological and polyanalysis correlating, um, which studies allows to create a unique sequence covering the last, the last 6,000 years. Self, several cold and dry periods were recorded since Middle Holocene in concordance with cooler phase in Europe. Coastal pro, propagate, pro, pro, Progradation associated to siltation of um, important naval routes of communication participated to the abandonment of the large sheltered anchorage of the Romolac Servisacia during the early 12th century before Christus. Before Christus. At Pitian, core extraction and paleoenvironmental reconstruction are systematically employed for the last 40 years. At still at Kitian, at around, around the 9th century, between the 9th century and the 5th century before Christus, the site overlooks the sea and um, a sea bay, involving into a lagoon and then into an increasingly enclosed marshland following the formation of a coastal bank. Thus, the militar, military port was founded in the classical period in a lagoon environment the coastal bank of pebbles having favored the in installation of a port activity in the most protected part of the lagoon. The Gallias Valley is the best studied area concerning the Holocene alluvial reconstruction in Cyprus. The geomorphological study of the median sector of the valley has identified several paleosol, paleosoil during the early to middle Holocene while downstream marine, vast, um, marine formation filled the lower Fortana Gusta Valley. All the watershed experienced very high sedimentation rate with a negligible human influence on detritism. Between uh, 3,500 uh, 3, and 2,000 before Christus, the first major incision phase attested in the alluvial sequence was linked to the low water table and to relatively high temperature. This event can be reasonably related to the cold and dry period identified in the Larnaca Salt Lake. Downstream, the presence of a shell sand testifies to the establishment of a coastal barrier between 2000 BC and 1.2 thousand BC. Uh, 1.2 thousand AD, sorry. A new uh, significant alluvial period. During the Middle Ages, a new fluvial incision affects the Middle Valley, corresponding to the cold and dry events of 800 AD identified by Kenuski at Larnaca. The sedimentation rates of the Frankish, Venetian, and Ottoman periods are important and characterized by sands with lengths of pebbles. The raising of the alluvial, alluvial floor between four and five meters causes significant change in the morphology of the alluvial, alluvial plain during the Little Ice Age, it means uh, during the medieval period, and the development uh, related to the fluvial networks 
um, like for example mills, uh, bridges and dams um, become rapidly unsuitable and are quickly become buried. In this review paper, I'm still under process, we aim to discuss to, um, uh, to discuss also the geomorphological mapping using that used remote sensing and historical geography that allowed to propose a diachronic evolution of the coastal areas. Most of the sectors concern the Akrotiri Salt Lake, the Larnaca Salt Lake, and the Famagusta Bay. Still in this review paper, still under process, we aim to discuss first the chronology of the depositional and erosive phases since, since late Pleistocene. Second, we aim to study the coastline changes since late Pleistocene. And third, third the implication of landscape change for past human population. We will also try to discuss the um, limitation of geomorphological and paleoenvironmental studies. And finally, we will propose some guidelines for future multidisciplinary studies on past landscapes. Still ongoing research on the ones that we are going to, um, to, to do on the area of um, Amatus and Paphos within the frame, framework of the French archaeological mission and in association with the archaeological research unit of the University of Cyprus. These studies will allow to confront this pre the previous reconstruction that we um, could see on the previous slide and to create new um, comparison and new case studies in order to refine the chronology and to bring, near, and to bring new information of the coastal change. I thank you for your time and for your attention. And I'm now at your disposition for questions. Great. Thank you, uh, Mark Antoine. Thank you very much and congratulations for this uh, wonderful overview. I'm sure it was uh, very enlightening to most of us who are not very familiar with uh, uh, this part of, uh, of, your, of your research, uh, also carried out by uh, the Archaeological Research Unit between you and Apostolo Saris. Um, I'm sure people have realized how important that uh, the work of people like you is in our area, um, both the geophysical uh, Geophysics, but also the geomorphological and paleoenvironmental studies. Um, I was paying closer attention to uh, to the periods, to, to the uh, to your references to the uh, later historical periods. As uh, I was fascinated, there are so many things uh, one can uh, look into by combining. Uh, your study with the archaeological evidence or the lack of evidence we have for certain periods, certain historical periods, where both uh, the actual archaeological evidence and the historical sources uh, can, you know, uh, combined all together, uh, can get us closer.